And you know, this thing come from this book. Every every you know, every broker has a book in every country. Give you you know one page summary of every company. But I, I prefer to use value line as I said because of a US company it just give you more information. And for other countries they don't have value lines, you go with this. It tells you roughly it's traded at sixty million dollars in market cap. It has roughly about thirty million dollars in pre tax earnings. And it has about seventy million roughly hundred eighty million dollars in fixed asset, come up with a hundred 240 or so million in book value. So what does it tell you? What do you do next? You look at that one, it took you five minutes, you got this one, what do you do next? What? How do we know it's cheap? We think it might be cheap. But you're not conclu it's not conclusive yet. You have to, you have to go to, you know, next to find out what exactly what is the earning. What is the book? What is the constitution of the working capital? What is in the, in the uh, fixed, uh, right? No, I'm just basically using common sense and common logic. I mean, this is something you have to really think. You don't have to go through a, any, you know, this is sort of a, you're still kind of a, you know, savable, if you will. If you, <laughs> you know, that's why all my employee ever had really, Never went to business school, never worked for a uh, kind of establishment and management firm, and some of them never had accounting, because I find it's easier to train them than somebody who, who did. But clearly, it hasn't really demonstrated here. I mean, if you sort of go through, if they're teaching the right way, you should be able to tell right, right away what it is. OK, so we did some work. And it really takes no, no time. Of the 70 million in uh, current asset, you know how much is? It's all cash. Securities, tradable securities. Of 180 million, of the 180 million in so-called fixed income, <clears throat> well, they record it. They own 100% of a hotel. They recorded a 30 million as a book. They also own 13 percent of a department store, which should record on the book of 30 million. It just so happened that department store is next page. So it's easy for me to find. I turn the page around, I find the department store. I discover it is roughly had a market cap of a 600 million. So 13 percent roughly give me what? What? 80 million. Roughly 80 million. So the book really underestimated the <coughs> value by another 50 million. And they also owe three cable companies, <coughs> in the mid 10 percent ish. And they also owe a whole bunch of real estate. And next, I look at that department store they look at. Boy, <laughs> it has exactly the same profile. They're trading roughly around the cash and security they own, about two, three times of their earnings, and they own a whole bunch of a different asset. Turn out they're the second largest cable operator as well. And the next thing I learn is this department store really functions more like a hotel. It's not a department store that we understand here. They don't take any inventory. They basically provide it's more like a shopping mall. And they charge it by taking a percentage off the top line of all the merchants sell their stuff there. OK, so you add it all up. Here is what you have. OK, you're paying $60 million. You have a $70 million in cash. This is no debt. $70 million in cash. You have another $100 million in stock. That's how much is that? $170 million. You have a $30 million a hotel. The value hasn't been changed over the last 10 years. And real estate in Korea has gone up dramatically over that same period of time. I went to Korea and look at the hotel. I look at all their department stores. It looks quite decent to me. I check the recent transactions of all the things in the neighborhood. 
they all indicate me <coughs> that value is more like a two, three, four times of what is on the book. But supposedly I take it on the book. Supposedly I take it on the book. Let's add another 150 million. How much do we have right now? Roughly 320 million or so, which I paid a 60 million. And besides, I have an earning of about $30 million a year. What did I miss? You got a whole bunch of different things against you. You also have a whole bunch of different things that are really in your favor. You have to go through all of it, each one, and think rationally, carefully. You have to add to that list of the attitude of the local investors, the other people who are buying, because there's nobody from foreign that really owns this damn thing, if you check that. So you go through all of that, and we don't have time to go through all of that, but you should. And then you'll come up with a solution. I mean, uh, uh, come up with your de decision, as I have. And I sort of own it. And what happens to the stock uh, since? Well, again, nobody's have any computer or whatever you can check. You'll trust me. Okay, <clears throat> so I'll have uh, two charts that uh, that are printed out directly from Bloomberg. One is that um, <clears throat> that department store. It was traded around to somewhere around 22. Last I checked, it went to about 100. And then <clears throat> this one, start was 12. Last I checked, it's around 70 something. Each went up about five, six times. Anyway, well, I give a couple of examples just to tell you that uh, this type of approach is not natural to an investor. It's not natural to you. However, if for whatever reason you come to the conclusion that you yourself, your personality somehow fit in this mutated gene pool, that this is something that you might really <clears throat> be looking to do. The only thing that I can add to that <clears throat> is that there's a lot of money in it. <laughs> As has been I mean, repeatedly proved by people from Bangram to Buffett and everybody else. And I have been the probably just most grateful to this class, <clears throat> to Bruce, and um, actually many years before I came to business school, I took that class and it really changed me fundamentally. But one thing you do have to do is you got to do it. I mean, that's why I was somewhat disappointed of what, you know, the, the amount of work you have put into places. I tell you, I made hundreds of thousands of dollars just taking this class, just listening to the 14, 15 people. But it did a lot of work. I'm telling you, you can make a lot of money if you're really into this. Not only just listen, but do it. I mean, don't you guys, you know, how much you spend, you know, coming to school here? How much you spend? What is the tuitions, the board, and all of that stuff? What is it now? What? 70. 70 altogether? Well, you need at least to make it that up. I mean, you should at least make $70,000 back, right? And you also have a two years, you're not making anything. You've got to make that up. How do you make that up? This is a terrific way to do it. And so that's sort of kind of my last point I want to make is the only reason I've come back and really, so I don't really talk about our holdings anymore. And this is actually, we don't hold any of those two stocks anymore. Um, the only way I, I do that is because all the, you know, when I came here prior to business school and, di and doing the business school, you know, most people still talk about names. And I benefit hugely, hugely just by listening and actually do it. That's the difference. And then back then, that was more than, you know, 10, 15 years ago. I made, you know, roughly hundreds of thousands. In one stock is more than 100,000. Back then, I think our cost was also a little bit lower than, than the 70, I think. I mean, it was, I can't remember what it was, but, but it was a lower. And, but that's, but that's your, 
into this class fourth. This class is different from any other classes because there's no bullshit theory. All everybody's telling you is what works, is what works. And if they don't tell you that one, well, ask them. They should. Well, <laughs> maybe they should, <laughs> but I did. <laughs> OK. So this, you, sort of, you, you guys have a terrific opportunity. You'll be able to bid all the points that got into Bruce's class. And if you don't really use this thing, shame on you. You've got to do it. I mean, those are things, really, there's so much gold in it, that little pages. The little books, those value lines, all of them. You've got to use it. You've got to do it. I mean, you're young. You have energy. You know, what to lose? There's nothing to lose. 